this communication masterclass, as you've gathered already, is about helping you, the communicator, much more than your communication. Because I think if I can help you figure out, because this was where I mostly got stuck. I got stuck on this stuff. I got stuck about not being me, about being afraid to speak from my heart, about not being comfortable in my own skin, about not knowing what my own skin was. Um, at the beginning, 10 years ago, at the time of recording this to you, around 10 years ago, when I had this idea for the masterclass, it came from me going to see the film, The King's Speech. And I was wondering what I would do next as I stepped away from the role I had of leading that church for 30 years. I wonder what I'd do next. And I went to see the film, The King's Speech. And of course, if you saw the film, if you haven't, it's a great film to see. And a true story based on our king in our country. And he was a stammerer. He had stammered since his early childhood. And, and back then there was no TV. Literally, it was only radio. And to only have radio, literally we needed this king to have a voice. And the country was going into war. So we had a voiceless king, as it were. And the movie was about um, that struggle that the king genuinely had all his life. And what I was struck by in the movie is that all the techniques that they came to give him, that these speech coaches came to, to, to overwhelm him with techniques, bombarded him with techniques. None of them worked. He got so frustrated. He famously had such a short temper. He had no tolerance for these techniques to get him to speak without stammering. And he was so embarrassed and so self-conscious that he couldn't address the country and couldn't be a leader like he wanted to be as a king. And his wife found a speech coach called Lionel Logue, an Australian guy. And his approach was completely different. So when the king went to Lionel, Lionel Logue wouldn't even go to the Buckingham Palace. He insisted the king come to him. <laughs> So the king goes to Lionel Logue's office. And when the king met him and shook his hand and entered into this mentoring speech coaching relationship, he didn't call him your majesty um, or sir. He called him Bertie. And this irritated the king. And he got angry because he saw it as disrespectful and rude that this man would not call him your majesty or sir. And the reason Lionel Logue would not would not call him by one of his representative self-names, is my language for that now. The reason he wouldn't acknowledge one of the colors that royalty had painted on him is because Lionel Logue was trying to deliberately disorient him, deliberately getting the real him to tip out. And if he was angry and attacked Lionel Logue, for being disrespectful, Lionel Logue wanted that because when the king was angry and venting at him, he didn't stammer. So when the king was his real self, he talked in more of a flow. And when I saw that happening, I thought, that's what I struggled with all my life. I didn't struggle with... Um, what to talk about or knowing my stuff or even confidence so much. I struggled with not being myself, as I mentioned earlier. And no one helped me with that. Nobody, in fact, everybody that spoke to me early on, especially in the church world, one of the first things I was told is, you know, the pulpit or speaking in the church context, and you may have had this in your context, because certainly politicians must have something similar to, to them, or if you're in some sensitive area of the world, you know, and sensitive subject area, I was told the pulpit is no place for frivolity. I thought, well, wow, that's me in trouble then. I had to look up frivolity, by the way, to find out what it meant and realized I was guilty of it. So early on, I was told, this is no place for you to be yourself then. And from then on, I started being painted over so that I was the right color that they wanted me to be. 
So Lionel Logue wrong-footed him and got him to behave with flashes of authenticity and then went after that. When I saw that relationship between Lionel Logue and the king that revolutionized his experience and eventually helped him overcome to a large degree his stammer. It's a great movie. I saw in that film a picture of my life and I realized that my stuckness was the same as the king's stuckness that we all have. All of us have, I believe, an internal stammer that blocks our eloquence. We're eloquent in our mind. We know what we want to say, but we're deeply frustrated that when we open our mouth, it doesn't come out like we thought it would, like it did talking to our mate, like we hoped it would. And we get so frustrated and so discouraged and so negative about ourselves. And many quit. Many great communicators, we never hear, we never see, because they quit on the way to becoming that, because they couldn't overcome this metaphorical stammer which can have the form of fear, um, of rejection, fear of not being accepted, fear of not being popular, fear of being in trouble, fear of not being invited back, fear of getting no response, fear of stuffing it up, saying it badly, saying it wrong. So it creates its own version metaphorically of a stammer and many people get taken out by that. And I watched that movie and I left thinking, I wonder if I could be someone's Lionel Logue. I wonder if I could help stammering people find their voice, find their eloquence, find their heart and speak to us from that. And for over 10 years now, to thousands of people around the world when I've only ever done this event live. This has never ever been recorded before. I have been doing that. I have been spending the last decade helping people around the world to find their voice. I have been Lionel Logue to them and now I want to be Lionel Logue to you by helping you overcome your own version of your hesitancy, your second guessing, your stammering, your being negative and harsh and judgmental to yourself because it's because someone has taught you to be that way. I want to help you be you because unless you are you, the Holy Grail is never going to be within your possession and I want it to be and I know how you can get that and it's by speaking to us from your heart.